Hey, Russ. Good morning. Have you had enough coffee yet for a fun question from Reddit? <laughs> Another fun question from Reddit? Oh, dear God. A All fun, right. A fun question from Reddit. How do I apply practice in bouting? This person wants to know, and this is a pretty common question. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been fencing for a while, and I do really great in my practices and my drills. I am paraphrasing. Okay. Um, and perform the moves correctly, and mm -hmm. it feels pretty good. But during bouting, my form goes out the window, and I don't perform anything correctly, and it sucks. How do I deal with this? Mm. Okay. There are a couple different ways to deal with this, a lot of which has to do with your instructor. If your instructor is sensitive to this issue, they will build you drills which are kind of like sparring games. They are limited forms of bouting. And the reason you do that is so that instead of going from no pressure to all the pressure, you can scaffold your way up. So you keep good form from this level where there's no pressure to this level where there's a little, and this level where there's a little more. And you're always only making little tiny jumps. That's why the drills, for example, in the Austro-Hungarian manuals I translate, very often go from very simple to ridiculously complex. No one wants to drill them, but they're literally designed to solve this problem. When you're doing something with a parry repost and a double feint and a counter cut into it and a reaction to the counter cut into your double feint, trust and believe you've got the complexity of fencing plus how do I hold all this shit in my head and oh by the way we're actually trying to land these touches on each other, how did the drill go? Very very similar to bowing. Now, if you don't come from a lineage that has that level of complexity in your drills or that level of sophistication in your drills, and that's a lot of those lineages, then you've got to do something different. Then it's on you to figure out how to manage your emotions when it's no longer a partner but an opponent. Now, we love opponents. Opponents are our friends. Remember, opponents are not enemies. We huggle our opponents. That's why, actually, we literally often hug our opponents after bouts. Side note, if you're a dude, always kind of check whether your hugs are welcome after bouts, because I accidentally hugged a gal at Grass Frog who wasn't so into that. And she was like, okay, I get it, but this isn't my thing, and afterwards I felt really bad. Okay, so PSA over. You have to manage your emotional state. When you have zero pressure on because you're worrying about doing a specific action, your emotional state is undisturbed. You're in what the Japanese will call mushin, no mind. You're not worried about fear, anger, anxiety, ego-driven stuff, what the people in my discipline, the Feldenkrais method, will call cross-motivation. That is, I want to do this thing, but I'm also motivated about this thing, and maybe this is why I'm doing that, and I don't need to be doing this other thing in the first place. Well, how do you do that? Well, one answer is just bout until you get used to it, and it's no big deal. And I know credible people whose response is, hey, you're going to go to tournaments, you're going to go bout, and you're just going to get crushed forever. That is a way of doing it. But you can also go, hey, while I'm doubting, I want to fence as pretty as I possibly can. I'm not so worried about winning. I'm not so worried about losing. I'm worried about fencing as picture perfect to the drills as possible. What's the advantage of that? You put yourself back in the body organization where you have that mushin going on. Your emotional state is a neurological organization of the body. I know a guy who can give you depression and take depression away as a party trick. Guys in my discipline can do that. No, I'm not going to give you depression and take it away as a party trick. Yes, I know how he does it. I know exactly how he does it, and it works. 
for those of us who've had really serious depression for years and years and years. That's funny, but not funny. I'm one of those people, by the way, in case you're sensitive on behalf of other people. Yeah, I've spent 15, 20 years and all that damage going through that. Third option. Pick a state of mind you want to be in, but understand that you've got a gap between what you intellectually know you're able to do under laboratory conditions, where you have a set given number of responses, and what you're able to pull off when your balance is no longer static, but your balance is dynamic. So I went through this in Savat for a long time. It's a stereotype. I know how to do this, but I can't do it when I'm sparring. I can do it flawlessly in drills, but once my footwork gets complex because I'm ducking and dodging around, I can't pull it off. The reason for that is you lose your balance while you're adjusting to your other partner. So if Kat and I are bouncing back and forth, dealing with where the angles are, and we overcommit to things, an overcommitted parry, a first intention attack that's all in. This is a committed attack. I can't convert it to anything else until the entire action is completed. And that's what committed means. It means I have to finish the action. Well, look at my balance. I'm not changing to do something else. There's no sexy circular third about to happen that is gonna get me hit. If you've only seen circular thirds that are recovering from big committed first intention blows, your response is going to be, well, circular third sucks, because it will. But if I can do this, circular third's cake. Difference? My balance isn't way over here, because I haven't committed, I'm all in, full speed ahead, damn the torpedoes, to that specific action. Most of the time, if you're in that frame of mind, stop committing quite so much to any given movement. See if you can get out of the clenchy staccato way of generating power to something that's more reversible. So I generate power, I can go and move, but I can also go and change shape. I'm not fully committed to completing each position to which I'm moving. one of those three things will be relevant to your learning. Fourth, the answer no one wants to give you, you may just be a scrub. You may just actually think you understand the drills and you don't yet. So you intellectually know, hey, I could do this, but as soon as you're moving at all, it all falls apart and you have no idea what you're doing because you don't know how to stance properly. You haven't done your fundamental actions to where you're actually stable in your basic fencing position. And therefore, as soon as you're moving around, you can't support any of that other action. And at that point, the answer is go hit your fundamentals. That's a good idea for pretty much everybody. Talk to lifelong martial artists of any kind, fencing or otherwise. It's not an accident that the people who do it for 30, 40, 50, 60 years are all obsessed with getting their fundamentals correct. Because without it, you lose all those other things that make really complex actions simple. Balestra advanced lunge with a double feint is actually not hard at all if your fundamentals are correct. In fact, it's actually kind of sort of relaxing and simple. It's no more physically demanding once you take the aerobics part out, than any other action you might do. And even then, the aerobics component, if you have it dialed in correctly, is significantly reduced compared to, I'm gonna hurl my body through space and time and hope, which is what most of HEMA does. All right, Kat, that's all I've got for your person. So good luck, have fun doing the thing. Remember, it is really not the destination. It is really, am I having fun along the way? Because if not, why the hell are you doing this? Go golf instead and be frustrated at little tiny round balls. <laughs> awesome, thank you.
We've got more videos and content coming, so if you liked what you saw and it was useful for you, please stab the like button, slash subscribe, and punch the little bell icon so that you're notified immediately when new content comes available. Thanks, and go do the thing.